Hello, welcome back to Trekway. Uh, I'm Trev. He's Gray, um, fresh from a voice test. Hope you're sounding better than you were before, Gray. So that's a <laughs> roll so. your audio. It's all good. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the proper level. That's all. So we're good. We are good. Um, we can right. see the Sunitas this time. See, we can. You know, never. So I, I was saying to Gray, I would like it to see. Uh, I would like to see the Sunitas in live action. There were there was rumors yeah. of a live action uh, TV movie. You know, they do, they're going to do a Star Trek yeah. TV movie every two years. I would like the next one to not be a Picard one, but actually be a Cerritos live action, just a one off. Um, that would be cool. We probably won't see it, but um, yeah. Uh, anyway, so we are back for the review of Star Trek Lord Dex Season 5, Episode 7. Evan. Titled Fully Dilated. I'm thinking that's maybe something to do, Gray, with um, Hendy's uh, uh, eyes later on because she gets no sleep. I was trying to show, I was like, what's, what's with the title? I don't yeah, know I wasn't what's sure what. either. I mean, they kind of leave you going, like, hmm, I wonder why they picked that. So it was either she was really tired or she was pregnant, so it's fully dilated. So I was a bit confused. Yeah, well, that's true. Really, but... No. Um, anyway, so first and foremost, uh, please come along to our Discord if you haven't already, because um, we do talk about gaming a lot in there, because that's our other podcast, Extreme Gaming Podcast, but we also do talk Star Trek and science fiction in there. We have a channel for it, um, and it's discord.gg forward slash Extreme Gaming Podcast. Uh, all are welcome in there. Uh, we've only got another three episodes left of Lord Dex after this, mm-hmm. correct? Yep. I'm a bit sad it's going to come to an end because I like the show. It's funny. Um, and uh, Paramount don't know a good thing when they see it, especially after we what, we watched Unification and we saw yep. how good Star Trek could really be. And, and Lord Dex is similar. It's a funny take on Star Trek for adults. And why did it keep getting rid of the good stuff and leaving the shit in place? I mean, why? I don't know. I guess they felt uh, five years is good enough, so now they can move on to the Starfleet sitcom. It should be seven years, man. That's just that. Uh, so don't get it stuck. We, we've got rants and raves about all these things that they're cancelling and stopping early. Um, right. Anyway, this episode is kind of copying. It is very copy copycat. This episode, great. They were copying right. from many different Star Trek episodes. One of them is Carbon Creek from Enterprise, which you've probably not seen. Just don't like right. Enterprise, but you miss out on these things. And that's where the Paul, the Paul's grandmother was one of the first Vulcans, Vulcans on Earth, even before um, uh, First Contact. She, it was set in the 1950s, oh. um, and in a place called Carbon Creek, in the States somewhere. And they lived out their life for a little while until they could, something happened and they couldn't get out. So that was one episode, and they actually mentioned Carbon Creek in there at one point. Uh, Tallinn is part of their entourage as well. Man. And they all kind of, so, it's the usual humor style of this episode. They were, the Suitos had to actually pose one of these time fisher things that keep popping up. Um, and there's, that you see the Enterprise D, which was nice. Uh, purple, purple Enterprise, Enterprise D. Yeah. The Purple D, which sounds like an album name or something, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, the purple D there, they're going about having to close all these fissures. Um, something did crash from one of the purple enterprises on a kind of pre-warp civilization. So they have to go down and clean it up as you do. But there's a time dilation thing in effect, really? which the comment was similar to that Voyager episode and that planet that went round really, really quickly. And before you know it, they could, it was the god ship up in space, Voyager, and the, an astronaut at one point came up and visited them in the, on their starship. Um, so there's the mention of that Carbon Creek. There was a mention of uh, Picard when he's stuck in that time loop, loop uh, planet. Right, so three right. mentions. I like the I, I like this element, Greg, with it with it with a copy. Well, not copy yeah. borrow themes like that. Do you think borrow, it was a bit yeah. too much? No, I did think it was. Up? I mean, obviously, this episode they did a lot of name dropping like that more than usual, oh, yeah. but it was okay. It kind of made for the episode here and there it also apparently is common knowledge or they studied this in starfleet you know so they know about this stuff 
you yeah. know, which is kind of cool. But oh, then yeah. we get oh, yeah. we get the big reveal though, see? I'll let you tell him. The big reveal of yeah. what? Oh, data. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Brent Spiner's back. Um, they so, but we're kind of jumping the gun slightly because uh, Mariner, Tillin, uh, and Tendi are all going to go beam down and and do you know, they get their they kind of they, they look a bit like Andorians, but green Andorians. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought was, yeah. And then yeah. and, and and then Tiana's back, and she's cursing and swearing again. Grace, surely you're happy I love with that, it. right? Yep, very but, happy. What is it she said again? Something about whatever this shit is or something. Yeah, she's yeah whatever. To, yeah. When they started doing the horn, he says, whatever this, whatever the, whatever the F this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's always cursing. I swear, I, I don't know if I'll ever have the time. Or maybe someone will do it. Um, Excuse me. I want to go back and edit, like, every single episode. Excuse me. And take out every Tiana part of all the episodes and put them all together. I think that would be great. That would be such a good outtake reel. All it would be is beep, 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 beep. Well, even better if I can get somebody to imitate her voice and then just read that back in without the beep, 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 beep. <laughs> oh, no, that's what AI's for, my friends. Yeah, that's true. That, that and copyright. Um, Maybe they'll release a Blu-ray one day and they'll just say the R-rated uh, uh, lower one, deck. one, F only. I said a character only charm. But yeah, you're right. I would like to hear the uncensored version for sure. Um, yeah, so there's a little kind of, of course, B, C plot going on. There always is. The B plot is there's going to be a promotion for a senior yep. science officer. And Tendi and Tillin have both, is it Tillin or Tivin? Tillin. Tillin. They both put their, their name in the hat. Who's going to actually get it? And they're trying to out each other. So that's why they both go down to the planet along with Mariner to try and clean up this bit of technology that's been left behind. Um, they 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 beam down and they're only for for um Boimler, um and I completely forget his name. Rutherford. Rutherford. Or yeah. Otherford. Or Rutherford, Rutherford, yeah. Say. yeah. They they for them it's only going to be a, like a, a second, but for them on the planet it will be like a couple of weeks or something or several days, whatever it was. It's a time dilation thing. So, right. um, oh, there you go, dilation. That's where we got it from. Um, oh, right. see, we should have known yeah, it. right in front of us, right in front of us. <laughs> right. Um, so it's only going to be a second. But while they're doing this, the two of them are first of all drinking these fancy cocktail things, right? Looking ridiculous. Um, and you see more facial hair on Boimler. He's not grown it well. He's like me, doesn't grow well. And then he compliments Rutherford on he's got like a five o'clock shadow big time going here. It's all kind of even and stuff, proper man's beard. I'm like, I'm jealous. Boimler's complimenting him on this great beard. What uh, What are they doing, like, uh, Gray? Are they trying to like outdo each other? They're, they're borrowing from this other universe pad heavily, aren't they? Like, they're trying to be like. Yeah. Their other versions, aren't they? Both of them. Well, this has been a running gag since episode one. So I'm thinking, I guess, by the time they get to the last episode, they're going to tie that one up and it's going to result in something. I'm not sure what. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's got to because they can't just sit there and keep on doing this every single episode and, and always referencing the pad. And everybody knows about the pad now and they keep on changing their appearance to look like the people from the pad. Another, so they gotta wrap this whole other universe thing up somewhere along the lines. They do, they do, and, and maybe there'll be some kind of crossing of the universes again, and maybe they get switched with their counterparts. Or something uh, will happen. Let's say they can't leave that. There's always right. there's always a reason they put the they, they put these things into place, isn't there? So, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, one's got a great beard, the other one is not so great. Um, so. They're drinking their fancy cocktails. They literally beam the, the guys down to the planet, but immediately spill their drink on the bloody transporter uh, yeah. control L cars panel, short circuit in it, and then they're all freaking out. Oh no! And all you see them next is trying to wipe this off, but it won't wipe off. Bloody Boiler's got his shirt off, trying yeah. to like move this stuff out of the way. It's not working. They both start licking it to try and lick off all this stuff, but it's not to keep short circuiting themselves. Then they talk about the transporter chief that that uh, it smells because he uses it so much and never cleans oh, it. Oh yeah, <laughs> like it, 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 it tastes of such and such, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's like, well, oh, brutal, man. But, of course, on this planet, the time is flying past. I think they end up being there for like a year in total, year, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Um, and they have to try and fit into civilization until they get beamed up. And they go looking for the the trash uh, technology and they find Data's head in there. Yeah. Right, Spiner. We were hoping that would be the case. It looked like him. We were hoping he did come back to voice him. He did. Um, it's Purple Data, though. Another yeah, purple, album yeah. name. <laughs> it's it's not green this time, Data. It's Purple. Yeah. Um, and it, because they're trying to live out their civilizations, they're all in the house trying to get on with one another. The the two sites, gals are trying to outsite each other, and it's more Tendi that's trying to outsite to Vin big time. Mm-hmm. And she spots Data's head, so she's the one that actually powers him up using a hand crank. I thought, come on, it's a nitpick. I think you need a little bit more juice than a hand crank to power data somehow. Yeah, I guess, well, there's the car- the uh, cartoon logic again. They just kind of yeah. move over that part. And I mean, what, it has what? precedent, because remember when uh, uh, Spock did that uh, in TOS, uh, when they went back out on the city edge of forever, they go back oh, yeah. to the 40s, yeah. and he kept on buying you know, all these different pieces, and I, there, there was one funny part where he wanted to buy these things, and he goes, yeah, I need uh, some of those tubes over there and et cetera, et cetera. And they go, for what? It's for my uh, hobby. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And he was building stuff. That's right. That's right. I remember now. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah. Good cracking episode. Um, but yeah, the, the two girls are trying to out each other big time. While Mariner, this was a weird one. It's just a weird, like she was like the third wheel. It was kind of not required. Yeah. She didn't want to get involved in this stuff. She was like, listen, if it's good enough for Card to have a lifetime here, I will try and do the same. I'll have to go out and get myself a husband or a wife or something or a best pal and live out a life. And But she keeps failing. She keeps doing something wrong. She sticks one yeah. of her horns in someone's eye while chatting them up. She puts out an eternal flame thinking she's saving the, 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 the town from fire. And she keeps getting locked up for a couple of months at a time. With all jail pals, uh, so she ends up getting a little. She ends up getting friends at the end. Her jail pals, her, yeah, her, her cellmates. Yeah. Um, but the the whole the, it was just it wasn't it great to have Brent Spiner back. Oh yeah, it was, I didn't. I wasn't expecting it, so that was that was pleasant. You know, yeah. to see that. It's a good thing that it was just voice work because Brent Spiner's not cheap to hire. Oh, sure. he, yeah, like he all probably got paid more than any other voice actor. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, yeah, it, it, it didn't have a get load to say either, right? So yeah. that's cheaper than him being back on set properly. So yeah. it was nice to see him, nice to hear him. Um, he's trying to be a mentor the whole time, trying to help Tendi out. Mm-hmm. Um, but essentially, they have a guy lurking around called Snell. Snell, the, yeah. Yeah, uh, he's just a weird guy. He's a bit like, one of the Ferengi from that TNG episode with the first yeah, encounter, yeah. the Ferengi's a bit dodgy. Or almost, or a bit almost like a character from The Simpsons, I mean, the way he was, the way he's acting. It. Yeah, it like, yeah, you could say, well, yeah. animated, yeah, makes total sense. Um, but he wasn't yellow, he was green. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway, uh, he's lurking around and he does actually see Tendi with um, Data said, he's like, ah, I'm going to call you out, I'm going to call you out. They managed to wangle out of that one just in time for Boimler to actually play the pad long enough for them to beam back out again. Yeah. Uh, and they do beam back out. Um, And it's like, who's going to get this promotion? Who's going to get the this? And, and data, purple data, before he goes back to purple enterprise and purple universe, um, does make a recommendation to uh, Captain Freeman. And it's what I thought it would be. They're both going to get the promotion. Now, I've never heard of that in Starfleet. You can't share the same position. You can both be senior science officers. Yeah. There's nothing to say you can't have more than one, but they've got the same promotion. Did, did, you, did you think that as well, Greg? I, I didn't think that they were going to go with the two. I thought, I, at first I thought, well, when Tendi came out, she said something about, oh, guess who got promoted or whatever. I thought she was going to say, oh, uh, the other one won. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking was going to happen. And then just, you know, she won and that's fine and no biggie. 
But when they said both, I'm just kind of like, I thought the same thing. Like, you know, I'm going like, wait a minute. I think that, I guess the story would be is that they get, both can get promoted, which makes sense. You can promote more than one person. Mm-hmm. However, who serves on the bridge? So yeah, if someone's going to serve time. on the bridge, it's got to be one or the other, unless they're going to take turns. And that's why I think they share the role, because they'll both be on the bridge. Maybe, but the, but but even if they're both on the bridge, that's, that seems a little odd. Yeah, it's, it's, not happened before. it's not happened before with Star Trek. I right, don't believe exactly. this, so It's a weird one. But, you know, it is what it is. They're both good at their job. Tevin to, to, to didn't even realize there was a competition on, because she doesn't need to sleep much. She's a Vulcan. I forgot that's a thing. Yeah. Oh, I'd be great. I, I wish I didn't have to sleep. That'd be great. There's too many things to do. Too many games to play. Um, so, yeah, no, it was, listen, it was a really good episode. Um, yep. I will give it an 8 out of 10, Gray. I think that's very solid, respectful score. It's nice to see. I love the timey wimey stuff. Yep. But that episode of Voyager where they're stuck in that planet and they, they, or the time dilation effect, sorry, is brilliant. Deep Space Nine's got an episode as well. In fact, it was the planet mm. that you couldn't see. It was like once every 100 years it would come round, yes. if you remember, mm-hmm. in the Beta Quadrant. That was fantastic. So what did you give it out of 10, Gray, and what's your general thoughts on it? I was pretty much the same thing. I figured 8. I, I, it was really good. Maybe not enough to warrant a 9 or whatever, but it was but it was good. Yeah. Uh, and that's better than the typical 7s that we te- we seem to hand out for most of the episodes. Three weeks in a row, we'll give it a really good score. We'll give it a 9, a 9, and an 8. That says it all. We haven't, yeah. I think I gave one episode maybe a 6, and then a 7, but mm-hmm. it's not been any lower than that. It's been stellar this season so far, for the most part. Maybe they're trying to go out with a bang. I don't know. Yeah, well, not every show knows it's about to get cancelled. And they did know they were going to get cancelled, so they've got time to make it better, which is great. No, I'm really chuffed. I'm, I enjoyed that. We've got three episodes left. I'm a bit right. sad. If you haven't already, we've done a special, which we haven't done one of for a while. That was called the Unification episode, the Atoy done, between uh, the guys that stepped in for uh, Shatner and Nimoy to basically Cross some, you know, like basically just some closure for these guys. Yeah, a and lot I actually of closure. Showed, I'll be honest, you agree, I showed it to my mother before as well, and, and she does not really like Star Trek since the original series, and she went, that was emotional. She went, that was really, really good. I remember watching that as a kid. So, um, yeah, go and watch that, guys, if you haven't, uh, on Atoy, and then watch a review. Very That's very, very good. I'll like, I'll try and link it in the, at the end on the cards, okay? Right, great. We'll wrap up there, my man. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back next week for episode eight. But until then, say goodbye to the people, Greg. Long and prosper, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.